A millionaire notices a young black girl begging for food on the street every day. When he learns the heartbreaking truth about her life, he breaks down in tears. Who is this little girl? And what hidden secrets from her past could leave even the richest man so shaken? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Jason Kane leaned back in the plush leather seat of his Mercedes, loosening his silk tie after a long day at the law firm. The setting sun cast long shadows across the busy downtown streets, and he closed his eyes for a moment thinking about the successful case he'd just wrapped up. The car slowed to a stop at a red light. Through the tinted windows, Jason caught movement that made him open his eyes fully. Across the street, a small figure in a worn blue dress approached a well-dressed man outside a coffee shop. The girl couldn't have been more than five years old. Her clothes were clean but obviously old, and her shoulders hunched forward as she gestured toward her mouth, the universal sign for hunger. Jason sat up straighter, something in his chest tightening as he watched. The man's face twisted with disgust. Get away from me, he snapped, loud enough that Jason could hear it through the car windows. With a sharp shove, he pushed the girl backward. She stumbled, arms windmilling before falling hard onto the sidewalk. Her small hands scraped against the concrete as she tried to catch herself. Go beg somewhere else, the man sneered, adding a racial slur that made Jason's blood boil. Your kind isn't welcome here. The girl's face crumpled as the man stormed away, other pedestrians averting their eyes and hurrying past as if she were invisible. She stayed on the ground, her shoulders shaking in a way that told Jason she was crying. Stop the car, James, Jason said to his driver, already reaching for the door handle. His heart pounded with a mixture of anger and concern. Sir? James glanced in the rearview mirror, confused by the unexpected request. Pull over right here. Jason's voice was firm but gentle. The light had turned green, but he couldn't, wouldn't, drive away from this. The Mercedes glided to the curb and Jason stepped out, straightening his suit jacket. His expensive shoes clicked against the pavement as he crossed the street, mindful of traffic. As he approached the girl, he could see her trying to brush dirt from her scraped palms, tears leaving clean tracks down her dusty cheeks. He stopped a respectful distance away and spoke softly, not wanting to frighten her further. Hello there. Are you hurt? The girl's head snapped up, her dark eyes wide with fear and uncertainty. She scrambled to her feet, wincing as she put weight on her hands. It's okay, Jason said, staying where he was. He slowly reached into his pocket and withdrew his wallet, careful to keep his movements non-threatening. I saw what happened. Nobody deserves to be treated that way. What is your name? The girl hesitated, glancing between Jason's kind face and the wallet in his hand. Her shoulders relaxed slightly when she saw his genuine concern, though her fingers still fidgeted with the frayed hem of her dress. My name is Millie, she said softly, wiping her eyes with the back of her hand. A few stray tears still clung to her dark eyelashes. I'm Jason, he replied, kneeling down to her level. The concrete was hard against his knees, but he didn't mind. Those scrapes look painful. Would you like to sit down somewhere and get cleaned up? Millie nodded and Jason guided her to a nearby bench. He noticed how she walked with tired, dragging steps, as if she'd been on her feet for far too long. Her worn sneakers were caked with dried mud. Millie, he said gently, where are your parents? Is there someone I can call for you? He kept his voice soft and steady not wanting to frighten her. Fresh tears welled up in her eyes. My mom, she died last month. Millie's voice quivered. It was just me and dad after that. We moved into a smaller apartment. And where's your dad now? Millie reached into her dress pocket with trembling fingers and pulled out a crumpled, worn piece of paper. 10 days ago, dad brought me to this park. He told me to wait on the bench near the playground. Her voice caught. He said he'd be right back, but he never came. He gave me this letter. The paper was soft and wrinkled, bearing the marks of countless foldings and unfoldings. Jason's heart ached as he watched Millie smooth out the paper with her small hands. The edges were soft from being handled over and over, and the ink was starting to fade in places. Dad's name is Frank, she continued, 
staring down at her scuffed shoes. He seemed really sad that morning, different than usual. She swallowed hard, her bottom lip trembling. I waited all day at the park. Then it got dark and he still didn't come. I've been trying to find him, but... Her voice trailed off as more tears fell, creating dark spots on her faded dress. Jason felt a surge of anger toward Frank, mixed with deep sympathy for the child before him. Ten days alone on the streets. Ten days of uncertainty and fear. Ten days of hoping her father would return. The thought of this little girl spending nights alone made his stomach clench. Have you been outside this whole time? Jason asked gently, already dreading the answer. Millie nodded. I sleep in the park when it's not raining. Sometimes nice people give me food, but... She gestured toward where the man had pushed her, her small shoulders hunching inward. Most people just tell me to go away. Or worse. Her voice grew smaller with each word. Jason carefully unfolded the letter, noting how Millie watched him with anxious eyes. The paper was weathered, its creases deep from being folded and unfolded countless times. Small stains dotted the corners, evidence of tears that had long since dried. Would you like me to read it for you? He asked softly, his voice gentle and reassuring. Millie nodded, wrapping her arms around herself. I... I tried, but some of the words are too big. Her fingers twisted nervously in the fabric of her sweater. Jason smoothed out the paper against his knee and began to read. To the kind stranger reading this letter, and if you're reading these words, you've met my daughter, Millie. I want you to know that leaving her was the hardest decision I've ever had to make. I've lived a life of mistakes and bad choices, spending years involved in crime. Despite everything, I tried my best to support my family and give Millie a good life. Last month, my wife, Millie's mother, passed away. Without her, I had no one to help care for our daughter. I was desperate and made another terrible mistake. I stole from a store while on probation. The police are closing in and I know it's only a matter of time before they find me. I couldn't bear the thought of Millie ending up in the system, bouncing between foster homes or worse. So I'm leaving her here, hoping and praying that someone with a kind heart will find her and give her the life she deserves. A life I failed to provide. Millie is a sweet, loving child who deserves so much better than what I could give her. Please, if you're reading this, help her. She's all alone in this world now. With a heavy heart, Frank Johnson. Jason's hands trembled slightly as he finished reading, his throat tight with emotion. He looked at Millie, who sat quietly beside him, tears streaming down her dark cheeks. Her small shoulders shook with silent sobs. She had heard these words before, but clearly hadn't understood their full meaning until now. Did, did Daddy leave me because he didn't want me anymore? She asked in a small, broken voice, her brown eyes searching Jason's face for answers. Jason's heart clenched at her words. He carefully folded the letter and gently took Millie's small hand in his, squeezing it reassuringly. No, sweetheart. Your daddy left because he thought it was the only way to give you a chance at a better life. He loved you very much, that's clear from his words. He pulled out his handkerchief, and tenderly wiped away her tears. Jason carefully refolded the letter and tucked it into his pocket, his mind racing with the weight of what he'd just read. Looking at Millie's expectant face, he knew he couldn't tell her the full truth. What did it say? She asked, her voice small and uncertain. Jason gave her a gentle smile. Your dad wrote that he wants you to stay somewhere nice and safe while he's away for a while. He wants you to be taken care of properly. Millie's brow furrowed as she processed this simplified version of events. Though she didn't fully understand, she nodded slowly. Just then, a loud growl came from her stomach, breaking the heavy moment. She wrapped her arms around her middle, looking embarrassed. When was the last time you ate something proper? Jason asked, concern evident in his voice. Millie shrugged. Yesterday, I think, a nice lady gave me half her sandwich. Jason's heart ached at her words. He stood up and held out his hand to her. Would you like to come with me? We can get you something good to eat, and you'll be safe and warm. Millie hesitated for a moment, looking up at him with uncertain eyes. Really? Really, Jason assured her with a warm smile. My car's right over there, and my house isn't far. My wife Emily makes the best mac and cheese you've ever tasted. 
At the mention of mac and cheese, Millie's eyes lit up slightly. She reached up and took his hand, her tiny fingers wrapping around his larger ones. Jason led her to his waiting car, where his driver, Thomas, stood holding the door open. Thomas, this is Millie. She'll be joining us, Jason said as he helped her into the back seat. The leather interior was warm and comfortable, and Millie sank into it with wide-eyed wonder. I've never been in a car before, she whispered, running her hand over the smooth leather. Jason buckled her in securely before sliding in beside her. Home, James, he directed his driver, then turned his attention back to Millie, who was now looking out the window with amazement as the car pulled away from the curb. As they pulled up to the elegant two-story home, Millie's eyes grew wide at the sight of the manicured lawn and beautiful flower gardens. Colorful roses and hydrangeas lined the curved walkway, and a pair of mature maple trees provided gentle shade. Jason helped her out of the car, and she held his hand tightly as they walked up the stone path to the front door, her small fingers gripping him with nervous energy. Emily was in the kitchen when she heard the front door open. Jason, you're home early, she called out, wiping her hands on a dish towel as she walked into the foyer. The smell of fresh-baked cookies still lingered in the air. She stopped short at the sight of the small girl clutching her husband's hand, her dark eyes uncertain and watchful. Emily, this is Millie, Jason said softly, giving the child's hand a reassuring squeeze. She needs something to eat right away. Emily's maternal instincts kicked in immediately as she took in Millie's disheveled appearance and thin frame. Her heart ached at the sight of the child's worn clothes and tangled hair. Oh, sweetheart, she said kneeling down to Millie's level and offering a warm smile. Are you hungry? I was just about to make lunch. Millie nodded shyly, her stomach growling audibly, and Emily gently led her to the kitchen, settling her at the granite island while she quickly prepared a turkey sandwich and arranged some fresh strawberries and apple slices on a plate. Jason watched as his wife moved efficiently around the kitchen, bringing Millie a tall glass of cold milk and encouraging her to eat slowly her natural nurturing instincts shining through. While Millie ate, Jason pulled Emily aside and explained everything in hushed tones, finding Millie on the street, the letter from her father, and the ten days she'd spent alone. Emily's hand flew to her mouth as she listened, her eyes filling with tears as she looked over at the little girl who was savoring every bite of her sandwich as if it might be her last meal. Jason, Emily whispered, gripping his arm with trembling fingers. We can't just hand her over to social services. Look at her. She needs a real home, a chance at a good life. She watched Millie for a moment longer, noting how the child's shoulders had finally begun to relax, then turned back to her husband with determination in her eyes. We should keep her with us. I'm always getting bored at the house anyway, at least until we know more about her father. Jason squeezed Emily's hand and nodded thoughtfully, his expression serious but gentle. You're right, but we'll need to do this properly. For Millie to stay with us legally, we need her father to sign over custody. Being a lawyer, I can help make this happen, but first we need to find him. We have to make sure everything's done by the book. He pulled out his laptop and accessed the state's criminal database, his fingers hovering over the keys. Turning to Millie, who was finishing the last bites of her peanut butter and jelly sandwich, he asked gently, Sweetie, What's your daddy's full name? Frank Johnson, Millie replied, taking a sip of milk from her glass, leaving a tiny white mustache above her lip. Jason's fingers flew across the keyboard as he searched through recent arrests. Within minutes, his eyes focused on a particular entry, and he found what he was looking for. Got him, he said quietly to Emily, his voice low enough that Millie couldn't hear. He was arrested for shoplifting and violating probation, He's being held at the county jail just 20 minutes from here. Turning back to Millie, Jason spoke in a warm, reassuring voice that he hoped would put her at ease. Millie, would you like to see your daddy tomorrow? We can go visit him if you'd like. Millie's face lit up with hope, her dark eyes sparkling. Really? You'll take me to see daddy? Of course, sweetheart, Emily said smoothing Millie's curly hair with gentle strokes. The rest of the day passed peacefully as they got to know their young guest. Emily helped Millie take a warm bubble bath and gave her some old clothes that still had tags on them. 
items she'd bought hoping to one day dress her own child. They played Candyland and shoots and ladders in the living room, and Jason's heart warmed as he watched Millie's playful giggles fill their usually quiet home, her laughter echoing off the walls. That evening, Emily made hot chocolate with tiny marshmallows floating on top, and they all watched The Lion King together. Millie curled up between them on the plush leather couch, her small body warm and trusting as her eyes grew heavy while the movie played. When bedtime came, they tucked her into the guest room bed, making sure she was snug under the fresh floral comforter. Emily read her Goodnight Moon while Jason sat in the cushioned armchair nearby, watching as Millie's eyes fluttered closed. They quietly left the room, leaving the door slightly ajar with the hallway light on for comfort, just in case she woke up scared in the unfamiliar house. The early morning sun filtered through Jason's home office window as he sorted through custody papers, the golden light catching dust motes that danced in the air. The gentle scratch of his pen against paper filled the quiet room as he prepared everything they'd need for the day ahead, double-checking each document with meticulous care. Warm arms wrapped around him from behind, and Emily's lips pressed softly against his shoulder, her familiar lavender scent enveloping him. Watching Millie sleep last night got me thinking, she whispered, her voice full of longing. When will we have our own little one, Jason? Someone just as precious as her? Jason's heart clenched painfully in his chest, the weight of his secret pressing down on him like a physical burden. He forced a smile, though he kept his face turned away from his wife, afraid his eyes might betray him. Soon, honey, soon. The lie tasted bitter on his tongue, but he couldn't bring himself to tell her the truth, that the fertility tests had confirmed she could never bear children. He'd been carrying this secret for months, protecting her from what he knew would break her heart. Emily hugged him tighter, sighing contentedly against his back, her trust in him making the deception even harder to bear. Jason closed his eyes, guilt weighing heavily on his shoulders. The doctors had told him privately, sparing Emily the devastating news at his request. Sometimes the weight of this secret felt unbearable, but he convinced himself that shielding her from this pain was the right thing to do, even as doubt gnawed at the edges of his conscience. Should we wake Millie? Emily asked, stepping back and smoothing her hands down her dress. It's almost time for you guys to go. They found Millie curled up in the guest room, clutching a teddy bear Emily had given her the night before, her dark curls spilling across the pillow. Jason gently shook her shoulder, keeping his voice soft and encouraging. Time to wake up, sweetheart. Remember what we're doing today? Millie's eyes flew open, instantly alert, a mix of excitement and anxiety crossing her young face. We're going to see Daddy. As they drove toward the county jail, Millie sat quietly in the back seat, her small hands fidgeting with her dress, occasionally smoothing imaginary wrinkles from the fabric. Jason watched her in the rearview mirror, noting how she grew more nervous as they got closer to their destination, her earlier excitement giving way to apprehension. The state prison loomed ahead, its gray walls stark against the morning sky, a concrete reminder of the difficult day that lay before them. Inside the prison's visiting area, Frank's eyes welled up with tears at the sight of his daughter. Millie, he cried out, dropping to his knees as she ran into his arms. His orange jumpsuit crinkled as he wrapped her in a tight embrace, his shoulders shaking with uncontrollable sobs. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead as father and daughter reunited, their embrace drawing curious glances from other visitors. What were you thinking? Jason demanded, his voice stern but controlled. He stood rigid, hands clasped behind his back. Abandoning your daughter in a park? Do you know what could have happened to her? She could have been hurt or worse. Frank looked up, tears streaming down his weathered face. You think I wanted to leave her? That I wanted any of this? His voice cracked with emotion, raw and desperate. We had a plan, man. A real future. Something good for once. Still holding Millie close, her small hands clutching his jumpsuit, Frank told his story. I worked two jobs for three years, saving every penny. Worked nights at the warehouse, days doing construction. Whatever it took. Finally had enough for a down payment on a small house in a decent neighborhood. He swallowed hard, Adam's apple bobbing. The day before we were supposed to sign the papers, someone broke in. Took everything. All our savings, 
gone just like that. Three years of work vanished overnight. His voice grew quieter, almost a whisper. Marie, my wife, she'd been so excited about that house. Had all these plans for Millie's room, a little garden out back. Even picked out the paint colors. Frank's voice broke. When I told her the money was gone, he paused, struggling to continue. Her heart just couldn't take it. The doctor said it was a heart attack, but I know, I know it was the heartbreak that killed her. Jason's stern expression softened as he listened, his shoulders dropping slightly. The story hit him hard. A family's dreams shattered by cruel circumstance, a father driven to desperation by poverty and loss. He found himself unconsciously taking a step closer. I was already on probation for some stupid stuff I'd done years ago, Frank continued, gently stroking Millie's hair. When Marie died, I couldn't think straight. No money for food, bills piling up, tried to steal food from the store, got caught. Knew they'd lock me up this time. He looked at Jason with pleading eyes, his face etched with pain and regret. I couldn't let Millie go into the system. I've seen what happens to kids there. I thought... I thought maybe someone kind would find her, give her a better life than I could. Someone like you. Jason leaned forward in his chair, his expensive suit crinkling slightly as he moved, his voice gentle but firm. Frank, I need to be straight with you. With your record and this new offense during probation, you're looking at 10 to 15 years minimum. There's no way around it. Frank's face crumpled as the reality of those words hit him his dark eyes filling with fresh tears. Fifteen years, he whispered, looking down at Millie who was still nestled in his arms, her small fingers clutching his worn shirt. She'll be, she'll be grown up by then. A whole woman. That's right, Jason said softly, his heart aching at the scene before him. And without proper arrangements, she'll end up in the state system. Foster homes, constant moves, it's not what you want for her. Frank's body began to shake with fresh sobs, his broad shoulders trembling. I just wanted her to have a good life, man. That's all I ever wanted. A decent home. Good schools. His voice trailed off as he pressed his face into Millie's hair, breathing in her familiar scent. I messed up. I messed up so bad. Everything I touched just fell apart. Jason watched the broken man before him then leaned in closer, his chair creaking beneath him. There's another option, Frank. My wife Emily and I, we could take legal guardianship of Millie. We could give her the stability she needs. Frank's head snapped up, his tear-streaked face a mixture of hope and uncertainty, his red-rimmed eyes searching Jason's expression for any sign of deception. We have the resources to give her everything she needs, Jason continued his tone warm and reassuring. Good schools, a stable home, proper care. She wouldn't end up in some overcrowded state facility or bouncing between foster homes. She'd have a real chance at the future you wanted for her, the future she deserves. You'd, you'd do that? Frank's voice was barely above a whisper, rough with emotion. Even after what I did? After everything? This isn't about what you did. Jason replied, maintaining steady eye contact. This is about what's best for Millie now, and I think you know what that is. Deep down, you know. Frank sat in silence, his eyes moving between his daughter and Jason. The weight of the decision pressed heavily on his shoulders, making him feel like he could barely breathe. How do I know? He started, his voice rough with emotion, his hands fidgeting in his lap. How do I know she'll be taken care of? Jason leaned back in his chair, his expression softening as he recognized the deep fear in Frank's eyes. Let me tell you about Emily, my wife, he said. She, she can't have children of her own. His voice caught slightly, the old pain evident in his words. But you should see her with kids. The way she lights up, the natural way she cares for them, the moment she met Millie, there was this instant connection. It was like watching two puzzle pieces fit together. Frank watched as Jason's eyes grew distant, filled with love as he spoke about his wife. The sincerity in the lawyer's voice was unmistakable. 
Emily's already a mother in her heart, Jason continued, leaning forward with quiet intensity. She just hasn't had the chance to show it. And me? I'm a successful lawyer, yes. But I've always wanted to be a father. We have the means to give Millie everything she needs. Not just material things, but love, guidance, support. She'll have the best education, the best opportunities, and most importantly, a stable home filled with love. Millie, still sitting in Frank's lap, looked up at her father with innocent eyes, her small fingers playing with the buttons on his worn shirt. Frank stroked her hair gently, tears welling up again as he breathed in the familiar scent of her coconut shampoo. And Frank, Jason added softly, his voice gentle but firm, we'll bring her to visit you regularly. You'll still be her father. We're not trying to replace you. We want to help you give her the life you've always wanted for her, the life she deserves. Frank's shoulders slumped as the tension finally left his body, like a deflating balloon. He nodded slowly, reaching for the papers with a trembling hand. Okay, he whispered. Okay. As Frank signed the documents, Jason placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder, the warmth of the gesture speaking volumes. You're doing the right thing, he said quietly. I promise you that. After everything was signed, Frank hugged Millie tightly one last time, breathing in deeply, as if trying to memorize everything about this moment. You be good, baby girl, he murmured into her hair, his voice cracking slightly. These nice people are going to take care of you now, but I'll see you soon, okay? <laughs> Millie nodded, giving her father a kiss on the cheek before taking Jason's hand, her small fingers wrapping trustingly around his. As they walked toward the door, Frank called out, his voice suddenly urgent, Mr. Kane? Jason turned back, Millie's hand still in his. Thank you, Frank said simply, his voice thick with emotion, his eyes conveying everything words couldn't express. When Jason and Millie arrived home, Emily greeted them at the door with a warm smile that faltered slightly when she saw the thick manila envelope in Jason's hand. Her eyes lingered on the official-looking papers poking out from the top. We got it, Jason said softly, his voice gentle but firm. Frank signed over legal guardianship. It's all settled now. Emily's expression shifted, becoming more reserved, her lips pressing into a thin line. She gently guided Millie toward the kitchen, placing a tender hand on the little girl's shoulder. Sweetie, why don't you go get yourself a cookie from the jar? Just one before dinner, okay? They're the chocolate chip ones you like. Once Millie's footsteps had faded, and they could hear the scrape of a chair being pulled across the kitchen floor, Emily turned to Jason, her voice quiet but tense. Her fingers twisted nervously around each other. Jason, I... I need to ask something. She wrung her hands together, a habit she'd had since childhood. Don't you think we should wait? Maybe try for our own child first? Jason's heart clenched painfully in his chest, the weight of his secret about her infertility pressing down on him like a physical burden. The medical reports he'd hidden away seemed to burn in his mind. And... Emily continued glancing anxiously toward the kitchen where they could hear Millie humming softly to herself. She's black, Jason. People will ask questions. They'll stare. They might even say cruel things. Wouldn't that make things harder for everyone? For her? Jason took his wife's trembling hands in his, carefully uncurling her fingers and holding them steady as he met her worried gaze. Yes, there will be challenges. People might stare. They might talk. But Em, we can handle it together. He squeezed her hands gently, running his thumbs over her knuckles in a soothing motion. That little girl needs us. And I think, I think maybe we need her too. But what about having our own? Emily, Jason interrupted softly, his voice filled with tenderness. Sometimes family isn't about who shares our blood. It's about who shares our heart. And that little girl in there? He nodded toward the kitchen where they could hear the cookie jar's lid being carefully replaced. She's already claiming a piece of ours. 
The seasons changed like pages turning in a storybook as Millie settled into her new life with Jason and Emily. What started as tentative steps soon blossomed into confident strides as the little girl found her place in their home and hearts, transforming their house into a sanctuary filled with warmth and belonging. Emily threw herself into motherhood with unexpected joy, helping Millie with her homework at the kitchen table, the afternoon sun streaming through the windows as they worked through math problems together. She packed special lunches with little notes tucked inside, just like her own mother used to do, and spent weekends teaching Millie how to bake cookies and tend to the small garden they'd planted together in the backyard. Jason beamed with pride at every parent-teacher conference, watching Millie's grades improve steadily. He coached her through difficult spelling words and read bedtime stories, creating different voices for each character until Millie dissolved into giggles. On weekends, they'd spend hours in the park, Jason patiently teaching her how to ride a bike and catch a baseball. Their monthly visits to see Frank became a familiar routine. Each time, Millie would run to her father's arms in the prison visiting room, sharing stories about school and her new friends. Frank's eyes would fill with grateful tears as he listened to tales of science projects and soccer games, knowing his daughter was thriving. He noticed how her eyes sparkled when she talked about her life, and how she carried herself with growing confidence. I can never thank you enough, Frank would tell Jason during these visits, his voice thick with emotion. Seeing her happy, educated, cared for, it's more than I could have dreamed. Sometimes they would sit together, these two fathers from different worlds, sharing their hopes for Millie's future. Four years passed in a blur of school plays, birthday parties, and family dinners. Millie grew taller, her confidence growing right along with her height. She excelled in her classes, made close friends, and filled their home with laughter. The family they had become wasn't what any of them had expected, but it was exactly what they all needed. Every milestone was celebrated together, creating a tapestry of memories that bound them closer with each passing day. Every night, as Jason tucked Millie into bed, even though she insisted she was too old for it now, he felt grateful for that fateful day at the traffic light. What had started as a moment of compassion had transformed into something beautiful, a family bound not by blood, but by love. In those quiet moments, watching her drift off to sleep, he knew that sometimes the best families were the ones that life surprised you with. One sunny morning, as Jason rushed to get ready for work, Emily approached him in their bedroom. She watched him adjusting his tie in the mirror, gathering her courage. The morning light streamed through their curtains, casting a warm glow across their spacious master bedroom. Jason, she said softly, her fingers fidgeting with the hem of her sleeve. I've been thinking. Millie's growing up so fast and... Maybe it's time we tried for a baby of our own? Jason's hands froze on his tie, the silk material suddenly feeling too tight around his neck. His face tensed, and he turned away from her, pretending to search for his watch on the cluttered dresser. We've talked about this. I don't think it's the right time. But when will it be the right time? Emily pressed, her voice trembling slightly as she took a step closer to him. You've been saying that for years now. Every time I bring it up, you have a different excuse. First it was work, then Millie's adjustment period. Jason's jaw clenched, a muscle twitching visibly. I said no, he snapped, his voice sharper than he'd intended. The sudden outburst hung heavy in the air between them, like a thundercloud about to break. Emily stepped back, hurt flickering across her face, her hand instinctively rising to her chest. She'd never seen Jason this angry before, especially not with her. Something wasn't right. This wasn't just about timing or not wanting another child. The look in his eyes spoke of something deeper, more painful. Later that morning, after dropping Millie off at school, Emily sat in her car outside Riverside Medical Center. She stared at the building's entrance, her hands gripping the steering wheel so tightly her knuckles turned white. The late morning sun reflected off the building's glass windows, almost blinding her. Appointment for Emily Kane she told the receptionist minutes later, her voice barely above a whisper, hands clasped tightly in front of her. She'd made the appointment after Jason's last evasive response about having children. The waiting room smelled of antiseptic and fresh coffee from the nearby nurse's station. As she sat in the waiting room, Emily's thoughts drifted to Millie, how the girl had changed their lives, 
how much she loved being her mother. The way Millie's face lit up every morning at breakfast, how she always remembered to give Emily an extra tight hug before bed. But there was still that yearning, that deep-seated desire to experience pregnancy, to have a baby of her own. And Jason's strange behavior made her suspect there was something he wasn't telling her, some truth he was protecting her from. The nurse called her name and Emily stood up, her heart pounding against her ribs like a trapped bird. Her legs felt weak as she gathered her purse. She was finally going to get some answers, even if they weren't the ones she wanted to hear. Emily sat in the sterile examination room, the doctor's words echoing in her head like a cruel joke. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kane, but you are unable to conceive children. Her hands trembled as she clutched her purse, walking numbly through the clinic's hallways. Other patients moved past her in a blur, their voices muffled and distant. A mother walked by with a toddler on her hip, and Emily had to turn away. When she finally reached her car, she collapsed into the driver's seat, tears streaming down her face, her shoulders shaking with silent sobs. The truth hit her like a physical blow. Jason had known. He must have known all along. The realization made her gasp for air, her chest tight with pain and anger. All those years of gentle deflections, changing the subject, finding excuses, it wasn't about timing or work or being too busy. Every tender kiss, every loving embrace now felt like part of an elaborate lie. That's why he brought Millie home, she whispered to herself, her voice breaking. The steering wheel felt cold under her white-knuckled grip. He was trying to distract me, to give me something else to focus on so I wouldn't find out. Her wedding ring caught the light, and for the first time... Its sparkle brought her no joy. The memories of the past few years took on a different, darker meaning. Every time Jason had steered conversations away from having their own children, the way he'd thrown himself into Millie's care, encouraging Emily to do the same. It hadn't been just about helping a child in need. It had been a carefully constructed plan to keep her from discovering the truth about her own body. Even their weekend trips and romantic getaways seemed like calculated diversions now. Anger bubbled up inside her, hot and fierce. How dare he make this decision for her? How dare he hide something so fundamental about her own body? The betrayal cut deep, transforming her usual gentle nature into something sharp and wounded. She could feel the rage burning in her throat, tasted bitter on her tongue. Emily started the car with shaking hands, her vision blurred with tears. The drive home felt endless, each familiar street now seeming strange and hostile. Her mind raced with questions. How long had Jason known? Who else knew? Had she been the only one living in this carefully constructed lie? Each traffic light felt like an eternity as she struggled to keep her composure. The love she'd felt for Millie remained pure and true. The child had nothing to do with Jason's deception. But now even those precious memories felt tainted, knowing they were part of Jason's elaborate scheme to protect her from the truth. Soon after Emily got home, Millie also came home from school. I got an A on my science project. Her excited voice echoed through the house, bouncing off the walls with childish enthusiasm. But Emily merely nodded, barely looking up from the kitchen counter where she stood motionless, her fingers tracing invisible patterns on the marble surface. That's... that's nice, sweetie. Emily managed, her voice distant and hollow, like an empty room. Millie's bright smile faltered, dimming like a light being switched off. She stood uncertainly in the doorway, clutching her carefully crafted project to her chest as if it could shield her from the unexpected chill in the air. The usual warm hugs and excited questions about her day were noticeably absent, leaving a void that seemed to grow larger with each passing second. The kitchen, usually filled with the sounds of dinner preparation and cheerful chatter, remained eerily quiet except for the soft ticking of the wall clock. When Jason arrived home later, the tension at the dinner table was thick enough to cut with a knife. Millie pushed her peas around her plate in endless circles, stealing worried glances between her parents, her fork scraping softly against the ceramic. Emily sat rigid in her chair, her food untouched, her knuckles white around her unused utensils. The potatoes are really good, Jason attempted, trying to break the uncomfortable silence that hung over them like a heavy blanket. Emily's laugh was sharp and bitter, 
cutting through the air like broken glass. At least someone in this family can appreciate honesty, even if it's just about potatoes. She stabbed at her food with unnecessary force, making the plate clatter against the table. Jason's forehead creased with concern, his eyes searching his wife's face. Emily, what's wrong? Oh, nothing's wrong, Emily replied, her voice dripping with sarcasm. Everything's perfectly fine in our little make-believe world, isn't it? Where we just pretend and hide things from the people we claim to love. Her words carried the weight of betrayal. Millie shrunk in her chair, her small shoulders hunching as if trying to make herself invisible, her eyes fixed firmly on her plate. I think it's wonderful how some people can just decide what truths others deserve to know, Emily continued, her voice trembling with barely contained emotion. How they can just play puppet master with someone's life. Tears began streaming down her face, leaving glistening trails on her cheeks, and she abruptly pushed back from the table, her chair scraping loudly against the hardwood floor. Emily! Jason reached for her hand, desperation in his movement, but she yanked it away as if his touch burned. Don't, she choked out, then turned and fled to their bedroom, her sobs echoing down the hallway like a haunting melody. Jason sat there for a moment, his face pale with realization, his dinner forgotten. He turned to Millie, whose eyes were wide with worry and brimming with unshed tears. Sweetheart, could you please go to your room? Try to get ready for bed, okay? Millie nodded silently, sliding off her chair with none of her usual energy. She paused at the doorway, looking back at Jason with concern etched across her young face, before disappearing up the stairs, her footsteps unusually quiet. Jason took a deep breath, his shoulders heavy with the weight of unspoken words, pushed back from the table, and headed toward their bedroom to face his wife and the consequences of his secrets. Jason found Emily sitting on their bed, her face streaked with tears. The room felt heavy with unspoken words, the afternoon sunlight casting long shadows across their plush carpet. How long have you known? Emily's voice was barely above a whisper, her fingers clutching the cream-colored bedspread. About me being barren? Jason's heart sank into his stomach. He sat down beside her, reaching for her hand, but she pulled away, shifting further from him. Emily, I... I got tested today. She cut him off, her voice breaking like thin ice. And then it all made sense. Bringing Millie home, keeping me busy with her. She looked at him accusingly, her red-rimmed eyes filled with hurt. Was that your plan all along, to distract me from having our own children? No. Jason stood up, hurt by the suggestion, his tie suddenly feeling too tight around his neck. How could you think that? I saw a little girl who needed help. She was alone, hungry, scared, sitting there on that park bench like she'd been forgotten by the whole world. But you knew, Emily's voice rose, echoing off the bedroom walls. You knew I couldn't have children, and you never told me. Jason ran his hands through his hair in frustration, pacing the carpet between the bed and the dresser. I found out three years ago during your routine checkup. The doctor told me first, and I... I couldn't bear to break your heart. I saw how much you wanted children, how you'd light up every time you saw a baby. So you brought home Millie instead? Emily's words were sharp enough to cut glass. That's not fair, Jason said firmly, his eyes flashing with emotion as he turned to face her. Millie needed us. She was abandoned in that park, Emily. I didn't bring her home as some kind of replacement or distraction. I brought her home because it was the right thing to do because every child deserves to feel safe and loved. Emily fell silent, considering his words. Her anger began to fade like morning mist as she remembered the frightened little girl who had first entered their home. How Millie had slowly blossomed under their care, like a flower reaching toward the sun. I should have told you the truth, Jason admitted softly, sitting back down beside her. I was wrong to keep it from you. But please don't doubt my reasons for helping Millie. That had nothing to do with your, with our situation. Emily's shoulders slumped as the fight drained out of her, leaving behind an exhausted sadness. I've been so horrible to her today, she whispered, fresh tears falling onto her clasped hands. All because I was angry with you. 
I barely spoke to her at dinner, didn't even help her with homework like I usually do. Millie loves you, Jason said gently, finally able to take Emily's hand in his. She'll understand. That little girl has more compassion in her heart than most adults I know. The next morning, sunlight streamed through the kitchen windows as Emily prepared breakfast, her heart heavy with regret. She heard the soft padding of small feet and turned to see Millie entering the kitchen, still in her pajamas decorated with colorful butterflies. Millie, sweetheart, Emily said softly, kneeling down to meet the child's eyes. I need to tell you something important. Millie looked at her with those big brown eyes that held such innocence and understanding. Emily's voice trembled as she spoke. I'm so sorry for how I acted yesterday. I was very sad about something, but that was no reason to treat you coldly. You're such a precious part of our family, and I love you very much. Millie's face broke into a warm smile, and without hesitation, she wrapped her small arms around Emily's neck. It's okay, Mommy Emily. Sometimes I get sad, too. Tears welled up in Emily's eyes as she held the child close, amazed by her capacity for forgiveness and love. From that day forward, their family grew stronger. Their routine became a comfortable rhythm. Morning rushes to school, homework sessions at the kitchen table, and weekend trips to the park. Every other weekend, they would visit Frank at the prison, where Millie would excitedly tell her father about her achievements in school and her new friends. Frank would beam with pride during these visits, always taking a moment to thank Jason and Emily for giving his daughter the life he couldn't provide. The years rolled by, marked by school plays where Emily sat in the front row recording every moment, and special dinners where Jason would make his famous spaghetti and meatballs, Millie's favorite. Through all the ordinary moments and special celebrations, their unique family bond deepened. Emily discovered that motherhood wasn't about biology. It was about the countless small moments of love, guidance, and care she shared with Millie. The pain of her infertility gradually transformed into gratitude for the beautiful family life they had built together. They became experts at handling curious looks and occasional comments about their mixed-race family, responding with dignity and pride. Millie flourished under their care, growing into a confident young girl who understood that family comes in many forms and love knows no boundaries. Years flew by and Millie was now 15. She stood by Jason's car, her hands fidgeted with the hem of her dress, a nervous habit she'd never quite outgrown, one that always surfaced when her emotions ran high. Today was the day her father would finally walk free after a decade behind bars. You okay, sweetheart? Emily asked placing a gentle hand on Millie's shoulder. Her touch carried the warmth of countless mother-daughter moments they'd shared over the years. Millie nodded, but her eyes glistened with unshed tears, catching the early morning light. Yeah, I'm just... I don't know how to feel. She looked up at the woman who had been her mother for the past decade, searching her face for reassurance. I'm happy Dad's getting out, but... Jason came out of the house, carrying his briefcase out of habit his polished shoes clicking against the concrete. He noticed Millie's expression and understood immediately. Over the years, he'd become attuned to every subtle change in her mood, from the way she bit her lower lip when worried to how she squared her shoulders before facing a challenge. I don't want to leave you guys, Millie whispered, her voice breaking like a fragile thread. The words she'd been holding back finally spilled out, rushing forth like a dam breaking. You're my family too. These past ten years, this has been my home, my everything. Emily pulled her into a tight hug, fighting back her own tears, the familiar scent of her lavender perfume enveloping Millie. Oh, sweetie. Jason joined them, wrapping his arms around both of them, creating a circle of love and protection. Let's not worry about that right now. Today is about celebrating your father's freedom. We'll figure everything else out together, as a family. We always have. But as they got into the car, the tension was palpable, hanging heavy in the air like storm clouds. Millie sat in the back seat, staring out the window at the only real home she'd known since she was five. The house where she'd learned to ride a bike, skinning her knees countless times before mastering it, where she'd celebrated birthdays with chocolate cake and rainbow sprinkles, where Emily had taught her to bake cookies on rainy Sunday afternoons, 
where Jason had helped her with homework every evening, patiently explaining math problems until they made sense. The drive to the prison was quiet, each lost in their own thoughts like ships adrift in separate seas. Millie's hands kept smoothing down her dress, then fidgeting with her hair, which Emily had carefully braided that morning. She wanted to look perfect for her father, but her heart felt heavy with the thought of leaving the life she'd built with Jason and Emily, a life filled with love, security, and countless precious moments. Almost there, Jason announced softly, glancing at Millie in the rearview mirror. He saw the conflict in her eyes, the same bright, determined eyes that had captured his heart that day in the park ten years ago when fate had brought them together on that life-changing afternoon. Emily reached back and squeezed Millie's hand, her wedding ring cool against Millie's warm skin. No words were needed. They all understood the complicated emotions swirling through their hearts as they approached the prison gates, their car moving steadily toward a reunion that would change all their lives once again. The prison gates opened with a metallic clang that echoed across the parking lot. Frank stepped out into the bright sunlight, his eyes squinting and watering after years in the dim prison lighting. His faded prison uniform had been replaced with simple civilian clothes, well-worn jeans and a button-down shirt that hung loose on his thinner frame, a stark reminder of the toll the years had taken. Daddy, Millie cried out, rushing forward to embrace him with the boundless energy of youth. At 15, she was now nearly as tall as he was, her transformation from the little girl he'd left behind almost complete. Frank wrapped his trembling arms around his daughter, tears streaming freely down his weathered face as he breathed in the familiar scent of her hair. My baby girl, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion and unsaid words. Look at you. You've grown so much. He held her at arm's length, taking in her neat school uniform, healthy appearance, and the confident way she carried herself. His heart swelled with both pride and regret. Millie forced a bright smile, though her heart felt heavy with the weight of the moment. I missed you so much, Dad. Her fingers clutched at his shirt, as if afraid he might disappear again. Frank turned to Jason and Emily, who stood a few respectful steps back, their faces a mixture of support and barely concealed sadness. Thank you both for everything you've done, for giving her the life I couldn't. His voice cracked slightly on the words. It's time for us to go home now, baby, Frank said softly to Millie, trying to sound more confident than he felt. I've got a small apartment lined up on the east side and a job starting next week at Anderson's garage. We can finally be a family again. Millie's throat tightened as she looked back at Jason and Emily, her other parents. They had been her mother and father in every way that mattered for the past decade, through countless skinned knees and midnight fears. Emily gave her a brave smile, though her eyes were glistening with unshed tears. Goodbye, Millie managed to say, hugging them both quickly before her emotions could overwhelm her completely. She grabbed her pre-packed suitcase, the purple one they'd bought together for summer camp last year, and walked away with her father, not daring to look back for fear she'd break down entirely. Jason and Emily drove home in heavy silence, each lost in their own thoughts and memories. When they entered their house, the quiet hit them like a physical force, stealing their breath. No teenager's music playing upstairs. No backpack thrown carelessly by the door. No sounds of Millie doing her homework at the kitchen table or calling down to ask what was for dinner. Emily walked slowly through the living room, touching the framed photos of Millie throughout the years with trembling fingers. School plays where she'd beamed from the stage, Birthday parties with colorful balloons, family vacations at the beach. She picked up Millie's favorite throw pillow from the couch, the soft blue one with silver stars, hugging it close to her chest. It's so quiet, she whispered, her voice breaking on the last word. Jason wrapped his arms around his wife, his own heart aching with an emptiness he couldn't quite name. The house that had been filled with love and laughter for ten beautiful years now felt hollow like all the joy had been drained away with Millie's departure, leaving only echoes of happiness behind. They stood there together, surrounded by memories of their daughter, as the afternoon sun cast long shadows through the windows, and time seemed to stand still in their grief. Frank and Millie moved into his father's old house on Cedar Street. The small, weathered building needed work. Paint peeled from the walls, 
and some floorboards creaked underfoot. Dead leaves cluttered the gutters and the front yard was more weeds than grass. But Millie didn't complain. Instead, she rolled up her sleeves and got to work alongside her father, helping him clean years of dust and neglect from the rooms, tackling each new challenge with quiet determination. You're something else, baby girl, Frank said one afternoon, watching his daughter organize the kitchen cabinets with careful precision. Most kids would be whining about a place like this, but not my Millie. Millie gave a small smile that didn't quite reach her eyes, her hands steady as she lined up the mismatched plates. It's okay, Dad. We can make it nice together. Maybe we could plant some flowers out front when spring comes. Thanks to his reformed status and the state's rehabilitation program, Frank landed a job as a maintenance worker at the police station. The irony wasn't lost on him, but he was grateful for the steady paycheck and chance to prove himself. Each morning, he'd put on his navy blue uniform with pride, determined to make this fresh start work. Yet as the days passed, he noticed something wasn't right with Millie. The sparkle in her eyes had dimmed. She'd stare off into space during dinner, pushing food around her plate without appetite. When she thought no one was looking, her shoulders would slump and she'd let out quiet sighs that seemed too heavy for such young shoulders to bear. Everything okay at school? Frank asked one evening as they sat on the creaky front porch, watching the sunset paint the sky in shades of orange and pink. Yeah, school's fine, Millie replied, her voice flat as the horizon. You making friends? She nodded but wouldn't meet his eyes, focusing instead on a loose thread in her sweater. You seem down lately, baby. You can tell me if something's bothering you. Anything at all. I'm fine, Dad, really. But her trembling lower lip betrayed her words and her fingers twisted nervously in her lap. Frank watched his daughter, his heart aching. She was trying so hard to be strong, to not hurt his feelings. But a father knows when his child is hurting. He saw it in the way she'd sometimes take out her phone and stare at old photos in how she'd perk up briefly whenever a car similar to Jason's drove past, only to deflate when it wasn't him. Each disappointment seemed to weigh her down a little more. He asked her again one Sunday morning over breakfast, You sure everything's all right, Millie? She forced another smile, pushing her untouched cereal around the bowl. Just tired, Dad. Don't worry about me. But Frank did worry. His daughter was going through the motions, being the responsible, mature girl she'd always been. But the joy seemed to have drained from her. He knew she was missing something. Or rather, someone. Two someones who had been there for her during the most critical years of her life. The weight of that knowledge sat heavy in his chest, making him question everything he thought he knew about being a good father. One week after Millie moved in with Frank, Jason and Emily's car pulled up to the modest house, their hearts leaped at seeing Millie again. She was sweeping the front porch when she spotted them, her small frame silhouetted against the peeling paint of the house's exterior. Jason, Emily. Millie dropped the broom with a clatter and ran to them, her face lighting up with pure joy. Her braids bounced as she rushed down the steps. They embraced in a tight group hug, emotions overwhelming them all as they held each other close. We missed you so much, sweetheart. Emily said, holding Millie's face in her hands. Her eyes were wet with tears, and she brushed a gentle thumb across the girl's cheek. So very much. How are you settling in? Jason asked, looking around at the worn but clean house. The windows gleamed in the afternoon sun, evidence of recent cleaning. I'm okay, Millie said, though her voice wavered slightly. She straightened her shoulders, trying to sound brave. Dad got a job with the police department. I've been helping fix up the house. We painted my room yellow. They sat on the porch steps together, falling into the easy conversation they'd shared for years. The wooden steps creaked beneath them as Millie told them about her father's progress at work and showed them the garden she'd started in the backyard. Emily wrapped an arm around the girl's shoulders as they talked, occasionally smoothing Millie's hair with maternal affection. Unknown to them, Frank had returned early from work. He stood hidden behind the corner of the house, watching the scene unfold. His daughter's face glowed with happiness as she sat between Jason and Emily, chatting and laughing in a way he hadn't seen since she'd come to live with him. Her entire demeanor had transformed in their presence. 
Frank's heart clenched as he observed their natural family dynamic. The way Millie leaned into Emily's embrace, how she looked up at Jason with complete trust and adoration, how comfortable and at ease she was with them. It was a stark contrast to the quiet, somewhat withdrawn girl he'd seen this past week. Every laugh and smile felt like both a blessing and a knife to his heart. When Jason and Emily finally said their goodbyes with promises to visit again soon, Frank waited until their car disappeared down the street before entering the house. He found Millie in the living room, a genuine smile still lighting up her face as she hummed to herself while arranging some wildflowers in a chipped glass vase. Frank stood in the doorway watching his daughter. The joy radiating from her was undeniable, a happiness he hadn't been able to give her in the week they'd been together, despite his best efforts. The realization hit him hard, settling like a weight in his chest. But seeing her smile like that made something clear in his mind. Sometimes love meant making the hardest choices. Frank sat down with Millie that evening, his heart heavy but sure. The dim light of their worn-out living room cast long shadows across his weathered face, highlighting every line etched by years of hardship and regret. Baby girl, we need to talk, he said softly, patting the spot next to him on the old couch, its faded fabric telling stories of better days. Millie settled beside him, her dark eyes questioning, fingers fidgeting with the hem of her shirt. Frank took a deep breath, fighting back tears that threatened to spill over. I've been watching you this past week. I see how your eyes light up when Jason and Emily visit, and how they dim when they leave. He placed his rough hand over hers, calluses brushing against her smooth skin. I haven't been the father you deserved. I left you in that park, and even though I did it thinking it was best for you, it was still wrong. Not a day goes by that I don't think about that moment. Dad, no, Millie started, but Frank gently shook his head, his voice thick with emotion. Let me finish, sweetheart. Jason and Emily, they've been there for you all these years. They've given you love, education, stability. Everything I couldn't. Sometimes the bonds we make with our hearts are stronger than the ones we're born with. I see how they look at you, like you're their whole world. Tears welled up in Millie's eyes, catching the dim lamplight. But Dad, you need me here. You're getting older, and... No, baby girl. What I need is to see you happy. Your true happiness is with them. They're as much your parents as I am. Maybe more. He squeezed her hand, his touch gentle despite his weathered fingers. I want you to go live with them. It's time. But don't worry about me. We'll still see each other regularly. I promise. But this is what's best for you. I know that now, deep in my heart. Millie threw her arms around her father sobbing into his shoulder, her tears dampening his worn cotton shirt. Through her tears, she pulled out her phone with trembling fingers and called Jason. The next morning, Jason and Emily's car pulled up outside the small house, its silver paint gleaming in the early sunlight. Frank stood with Millie on the porch, her bag packed beside her, containing the pieces of her life that would fit in a suitcase. As they approached, Frank extended his hand to Jason, his gesture carrying both surrender and trust. Thank you, Jason said, gripping Frank's hand firmly. This means everything. We'll take good care of her. Emily hugged Frank, whispering, You'll always be part of our family. Always. As they drove away, Millie watched her father through the rear window, his figure growing smaller, but his love feeling bigger than ever. She pressed her palm against the cool glass, tears sliding down her cheeks. She knew this wasn't an ending, but a new beginning. One where she could have both her birth father and the parents who had chosen her, all bound together by love that transcended blood and time. If you enjoyed the story of Millie, I handpicked this next story that you will enjoy. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.